Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're really excited to have you participating in this event tonight. We've got some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Andy, and I'm going to be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Now, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website for more sessions later on. And this presentation is being recorded, and that recording is going to be available at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. And now I'd like to go ahead and think, turn things over to our first presenter, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Awesome. Hello, I'll we'll go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, can you just verify that you can see it all right? Yep, looks good. Perfect. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Gabby Knauer, and I am a freshman admissions counselor in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm excited to be here with you all tonight and share a bit more about what UW-Madison has to offer. So jumping right in, let's start by talking a bit about numbers. UW-Madison was founded in 1848, which means we have over 150 years of history on campus. Our total student body consists of around 45,000 students with just over 30,000 of those students being undergraduates. We welcome students from over 120 countries around the world and all 50 states in the US, making for a diverse student body that are all coming from a variety of different backgrounds. As you can see, our student to faculty ratio is 20 to one, which with our average class size being around 31 students. Next, let's talk a bit about the city of Madison. Perhaps some of you are familiar with the city of Madison and maybe some of you have never ventured across the border to the Badger State before, uh, but Madison is the capital of the state of Wisconsin and you can actually see the Capitol building in the center of this photo. Madison and our campus sits on what's called an isthmus, which is a narrow strip of land surrounded by two bodies of water. I personally love the city of Madison because you really get the best of both worlds of feeling like you're in a bigger city with a lot going on, while also being just steps away from the lake, hiking and biking trails and many other fun Midwest outdoor activities that you may be accustomed to back in Minnesota. So you might be wondering what's special about UW-Madison? Perhaps the biggest thing that sets us apart is our guiding principle that we've been committed to for over 100 years, known as the Wisconsin Idea. Essentially, the Wisconsin Idea is about taking the education that you gain and use it in the real world to improve people's lives across the state, the country, and even the world. As you can see, we are currently rated as the number one public university in the US, the 26th best university in the world, and eighth in national research expenditures. We also produce the highest amount of Peace Corps volunteers in the nation, which again really shows how students are using their education to help others around the world after they graduate. UW-Madison offers 126 different majors that exist within our eight undergraduate schools and colleges. We also offer over 70 different certificates, which other universities might refer to as a minor. Um, but unlike a minor, our certificates are more of a specialization and enhancement to your major and really a way of expanding a skill set in order to make you a more marketable badger. Uh, so I'd encourage you to research what specific majors and concentrations UW-Madison has to offer that really fits your interests and goals. Along with your everyday academics and involvement in social activities, these are some of those high impact opportunities you can look forward to having as a part of your Wisconsin experience. Most students will engage with at least one of these opportunities, if not multiple. While I don't have time to talk about each of these, I do want to highlight one of our more unique opportunities, which are our first year interest groups or FIGs. First year interest groups are a cluster of three courses within a specific theme that you can take your first year on campus. And they're all taken with the same 25 students for one semester. So this is a really great way to create an initial support group of students who you will see a few times a week and a smaller class size. So it really gives students the opportunity to make, to make connections the first semester on campus. At UW-Madison, we utilize a holistic admission review, which means that we look at every aspect of a student's application. 
We put the most emphasis on academic excellence, which means we're really looking for students who are challenging themselves with any rigorous coursework that is offered at their high school and typically earning A's and B's in their classes. We will also consider non-academic factors such as involvement, leadership experience, part-time jobs, and volunteer work. In order to apply, you can sit, submit an application using either the Common Application or the UW System Application. As a part of the application, you will submit your grades and coursework, um, involvement, you'll, and you'll also submit two short essays. We will also ask for one letter of recommendation from an academic source, which typically means a teacher or a counselor. And UW-Madison is currently test optional through the spring of 2023. Students will not be disadvantaged in any way if they choose not to submit a test score, but for those who feel strongly that they would like a test score considered, such as the ACT or SAT, we will use it as an additional piece of information in our review. Students can apply either by our early action deadline of November 1st and hear a decision back by the end of January, or a regular decision deadline of February 1st and hear back by the end of March. And lastly, I do want to touch quickly on financing your education at UW Madison. It is an important uh, to it's important to understand that the cost of attendance will vary from student to student based on a variety of factors. But one amazing benefit of coming to UW from the state of Minnesota is that you qualify for reduced out of state tuition through the Minnesota Wisconsin reciprocity agreement. Additionally, you can also apply for a variety of scholarships that are offered through our Wisconsin scholarship hub. And you may also qualify for need-based financial aid, which is going to be determined by filling out the free application for federal student aid. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our office at any of the contacts listed here. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out our Visit Bucky website and sign up for a full information session um, and tour. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening and on Wisconsin. All right, thank you so much to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And next up, we've got Minnesota State University, Mankato. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Emily, and I am the Twin Cities Admissions Officer from Minnesota State University, Mankato. I'm going to start us off with some really general information about MSU. Of course, we are a four-year public institution where you can earn your bachelor's degree, though we do have master's and doctoral programs as well. We are located in South Central Minnesota, about 85 miles south of the Twin Cities metro area. Mankato is a beautiful community. Its current population is just under 55,000. We were founded back in 1868, so we also celebrate over 150 years of excellence. We started as a college just for teachers, but of course we have since grown, and we now offer over 130 different undergraduate programs of study, which are the majors that you'd be able to explore and eventually choose from. We are a medium-sized campus. Our current student population is around 14,500. And I would say we're medium, right? So when I was a student here not too long ago and I would walk through campus, I didn't know everyone, of course, but you would usually see a good amount of familiar faces. You still get to know your faculty. And I really enjoyed that balance um, of being on a medium-sized campus. And even with 14,000 students, we do still see a student to faculty ratio of 20 to one, which really means that on average, your class sizes will be around 20. We have a 93% job placement rate among our graduates within one year of graduation. We are a national leader in undergraduate research, and we have two, over 200 recognized student organizations. As I mentioned, we have over 130 programs of study. Our top five most popular majors are biology, nursing, psychology, business management, and elementary education. And I also like to share some of our more unique majors, including aviation, construction management, sports management, dental hygiene, or the theater program. When you apply for admission to MSU, you are applying for admission to the university. So you do not by any means have to know exactly what your major is going to be upon application. So we'll give you an academic advisor who will work with you to make sure that you are um, exploring areas that you're interested in and eventually picking that focus area to major in and still graduating in under four years, four years or less. Across our university, we offer many, many services and resources for our students to utilize. The ones that you see on the screen are just a few of the many. 
I'm going to highlight just a few of them today. Um, first of all, our learning communities under the academic category. We do offer a learning community experience which allows students to live on a residential hall floor with other students who are similar to them in their majors, their minors, their identities, or their interests. So that's a great way to get on campus and have immediate friends to help with that transition to the college experience. I also like to highlight MSU's value of diversity. We have a very extensive and active Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, who hosts fun and, and, and educational events very often for all of our students to enjoy. And of course, we extend a very warm welcome to students of every culture and background. Of course, uh, campus life is an essential piece of your college experience. As I mentioned, we have over 200 recognized student organizations, everything from academic clubs related to your major, cultural, religious-based groups, service or special interest groups, club and intramural sports, and so much more. There's really something for everyone on our campus. Mankato is NCAA Division I for men and women's hockey and Division II for all of our other athletic teams. We have a very active campus recreation program and there are plenty of ways to get involved in the community of Mankato as well. Our application process is very quick and easy. We do not use the common application, but you can find our application on our website. Uh, the, the online application is really just fill in the box. We're not looking for essays or letters of recommendation or anything like that. Just, just fill in the box kind of demographic information. In addition to the application, we do need to receive a $20 application fee, though there are a few opportunities to get that fee waived. For example, right now, if you apply during any time during the month of October, your application fee would be automatically waived. So any seniors joining tonight, uh, submit that application in October. It's free, it's quick. Um, we will also need to receive your high school transcript um, and your ACT scores if you choose to send that to us though we are test optional through the fall of 2022. At MSU, we lay out our admission requirements clear as day, so you know whether or not you will be offered automatic guaranteed admission. Um, you can see this on the screen. Essentially, you would need a 3.0 cumulative GPA or higher, or to rank in the top 50% of your class. Or if you've taken the ACT exam, you can have a 21 or higher composite score with a minimum GPA of a 2.7. Any one of those things would guarantee you acceptance to the university. If you don't meet one of those things, definitely still apply and we'll work with you to build a comprehensive, uh, holistic review case file that will review for admission. Uh, living on campus is really great. I re really recommend touring any campus that you're interested in uh, to be walked through the residential halls at MSU. Living on campus is of course highly recommended, but not required. The last thing I want to talk about is our academic year costs. One of the biggest takeaways for Mankato for you to remember is that we are a very affordable option. Your total estimated university costs will be around $19,000. And of course, that is before any financial aid or scholarships. Thank you so much for joining us again tonight. I look forward to seeing any questions in the Q&A or chat box, or please feel free to reach out in the future. Thank you. All right, thank you so much to Minnesota State University, Mankato. And next up, we've got Southeast Technical College. Hey guys, thanks for uh, coming on tonight. My name is Joe Weber, I'm admissions rep here at Southeast Technical College. We're a small little school here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And uh, let me see if I can get my screen up here. All right, so can we see the slide, the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Perfect. So like I said, we're here in South, uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, we're a small technical school that focuses on associate degree programs and one year diploma programs. So it's a way for you to kind of fast track your education in uh, fields that you see on the screen, like engineering, horticulture, healthcare. We really work with our industry partners in the region to get you out working uh, quickly. Most of our students work part time while going through their programs. Um, and these programs are all very in demand, uh, meaning this is what industry is looking for. Some facts about us is basic is our, um, we have about 2,400 students enrollment. We sit just to the Northwest side of Sioux Falls. Um, they have very skills relevant facilities. So the facilities they're gonna be learning in um, are gonna be exactly what you can expect to see out in industry. So we do things a little bit differently than what a four-year school would do. Um, 
and we really get you in hands-on right away. So you're not coming in as a freshman and taking a bunch of classes that you just really don't know about or why are you taking them? You're in your program area right away. We offer food on campus. Um, we offer a daycare center and IT support. And then there's ways to get involved at Southeast Tech. You can, um, you know, really kind of intramural sports, volleyball, basketball, bowling. Uh, so you can get that college experience still by coming to Southeast Tech. But the real reason students come here is to get jobs. And that's what we specialize in. We have 35 programs that are 100% job placement. Overall, as a campus, we are 98% job placement last year. Fact is, our students are going to work after graduation and they're doing well. You can see all the ways that we help you find a job and get a job and keep a job. We offer housing as well to our students. So anybody can come to campus and, um, face, and live on campus. It is optional, you don't have to. Uh, we offer four bedroom apartments, not dorms. So kind of a benefit is you don't have to share a bedroom with a bunkmate. You have your own bedroom with a door that locks, your own private space. Um, you share a bathroom with one other roommate and the living room with kitchen with three other roommates. Um, so they are single gender, all girls or all guys to an apartment. Um, but the floors and the buildings are co-ed, so your next door neighbor might be four guys or four girls. Um, and they're just really nice to kind of transition out of mom and dad's house into uh, an apartment of your own without having to have all the uh, stress of an actual apartment because all of that cost per semester there, um, that is, uh, covers everything. So you wouldn't have to worry about a utility bill or an internet bill, even a laundry bill. Once again, our skills. And then the big deal here is our faculty. Uh, you're not just a number at Southeast Tech, you're a person. Uh, we have small class sizes, lots of one-on-one -on -one interaction with the uh, instructors, and lots of time to really get to know who you're working with. They get to know you. Um, it's really kind of that family type environment college here. Um, and you get to know everybody on campus, so really great. Smart investment, you know, we are very inexpensive as far as our, our tuition goes. We're uh, charged by the credit hour. A typical two-year program is about only about $17,000, and you can get that potentially 100% free. My last point that I want to touch on as I think I'm running out of time is the Build Dakota Scholarship. All of you students are eligible for that. It is a potential full-ride scholarship. Books, supplies, tuition, laptop, I will pay for everything. You will come to school 100% free. In return, you'll promise to work in the field that you've trained in in South Dakota for three years after you graduate. With that all being said, I think I'm maybe a little early, but I'm ready to finish up. All right, well, thank you so much to Southeast Technical College. And next up, we've got Waldorf University. I wasn't prepared, I got done so fast. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Madison Stevenson from Waldorf University. Um, I'm the admissions counselor that is in charge of um, all prospects from Minnesota. Let's see if I can get this shared. Um, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. You share. Is it on the um, Prezi? Is it, it is, yes. Okay, perfect. So this is the Prezi that we use for our um, general open house. So we'll kind of skip around, just go through the main points. So just WU, the big picture, um, you will have an opportunity to receive a unique, affordable, personalized, private um, educational experience. We are a private university. We're located about two hours south of the cities, just right across the border in Iowa, in Fort City. Founded, um, we were founded in 1903. We are located in a rural small town. We have about 600 students on campus, but we also have about 3,000 students taking our um, online programs. Um, our student to faculty ratio is about 11 to one. Our average class size is about 15 students. Though we are a small campus, we do have a lot of diversity on campus, which is kind of nice because you do get to have that experience and you do get to have those personal relationships developed with students that are from all over. We have about 35 states represented on campus and about 30 countries. And one of the cool things about um, our international students is that we also have on our main atrium area, we have flags that adorn the ceilings from all of the different countries that are represented on campus. A little bit about our academics. Here's a list of our different majors. This is just the majors. It's not exactly the different tracks that you can take. Some of our more popular majors are our biology. We have our pre-professional programs that a lot of biology degrees, you have to take graduate school. 
So the pre-professional programs are there to make sure that you're taking classes specific towards what you wanna to go to graduate school for. Our business um, major is also popular. Our communications, specifically um, digital media and graphic design. Also our criminal justice and our psychology, a lot of times they pair together, whether it be a double major or a major and a minor. Our education is pretty popular because um, since we are located in a smaller school or a smaller town, we do have good relationships with the schools and the surrounding towns. So you are able to get that in classroom experience from your freshman year on. Also health promotion and exercise science for physical therapy tracks and then also our sport management is pretty popular. We do have a lot of support systems on, on campus. So we do have free tutoring. Our classes are taught by professors. So we don't have any TAs or GAs on campus. So even your gen ed classes, you are being taught by a professor that is, has the ability to teach that class. Also the different counseling services on top of your academic advisor, you are also given a student success coach and they're there to make sure that you're getting all the resources you need on campus or just being directed towards where you need to go. So, let's see. so enrollment. So for admissions, our automatic admissions criteria, since we are very um, heavily athletic based, but we are trying to break into non-athletics, our um, autom automatic admissions criteria is very closely aligned to our NAIA eligibility requirements, which is a minimum GPA of 2.0, ACT requirement of 18. The application is free. And then for admissions, we are waiving the ACT requirement for this upcoming year. Back. And then, so in regards to um, investment and then also scholarships, I won't try to find that slide on here. All of our students on campus do have some sort of scholarship. We do have 100% of the student body that's on something, whether that be merit-based scholarships, which would be based on your GPA or your, um, including your SAT. We do also have a lot of students that are on athletic-based scholarships, which are provided specifically through your coach. And then we also have a lot of performing arts scholarships as well that are available through applications on our website. We have scholarships through choir, band, and theater. And then also our Pillars program here on campus, which is a career development program. Her scholarships range from half to full tuition. And there is also an application on the website for that as well. That requires an essay and then also a, um, a letter of recommendation. And then I'll just go through this and see. Um, so these are just the steps that you would take um, for the admissions process. So the first thing for everyone, just apply. It's free all year round. We don't tack any sort of um, extra costs to that. And then also just an unofficial high school transcript through there. And then I think that's all I need for time. And I think I'm done. All right. Well, thank you so much to Waldorf University. And next up, we've got Arcadia University. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us um, this evening. My name is Nick Milheim, um, and I am your admissions counselor. I work with students um, from Minnesota um, applying to Arcadia University. Um, so to get started, the right screen, a little bit about who we are. Um, Arcadia University, we are located in Glenside, Pennsylvania, um, which is actually part of the greater Philadelphia region. So we are about 30 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Um, but uh, part of that greater Philadelphia suburb region. So um, Arcadia kind of has the best of both worlds in that we have lots of green spaces on campus. Um, obviously you can see a castle uh, on campus. We do feature a castle on campus, which is amazing. It never gets old, uh, no matter how many times you're there, um, but you still do have uh, really easy access to um, Philadelphia um, at your disposal. We do have a train station that's less than a mile away from campus. Um, and we also have a bus stop that comes right to the front of the castle as well. Um, so lots of options to get downtown if you want to explore downtown. Um, but Glenside itself has lots of restaurants and shops and things to do um, right around campus as well. Um, 
In terms of numbers, we're about 2,100 undergraduate students. We're about uh, 1,400 grad students at Arcadia. So your average class size is actually only about 14. Um, our classes are actually capped at 35 students. So you're never gonna have more than 35 students in a class with you. Um, but you're really gonna be more around that uh, 14 for uh, all your classes, even as a first year student. Um, I actually just finished up my master's at Arcadia this past summer. Um, and one of the first classes that I ever took was um, a class uh, over the summer, and it was just me and the professor when I got into the class. So um, definitely a little awkward. I had to do my homework really well, or else it wasn't a good class. Um, but it meant a lot to me that that professor um, still ran the class, even though it was just me uh, in the course. Um, I think that that says a lot about the faculty that we have here at Arcadia and that they really are here for you. Um, and if you're willing to put in the time, they're willing to teach. Um, so that meant a lot to me. Um, and he didn't make me stay the full three hours, which was great as well. Um, more than 65 fields of study to choose from at Arcadia. Our most popular major on campus is biology mostly because of all the pre-professional programs that we offer here at Arcadia, um, mostly in the health sciences. Um, other popular majors on campus include education, uh, business administration, psychology, um, and our doctorate of physical therapy program is actually ranked number 24 in the country. A little bit about what's going on on campus. Uh, we have 26 varsity sports here at Arcadia. Uh, we are division three athletics. Um, that number actually grew a lot within the last couple of years. Um, we recently added men's and women's um, into our outdoor track and field. Um, men's and women's ice hockey is about to kick off their inaugural season uh, here in a couple of weeks, which is so exciting. It's been a long process for ice hockey. And we're one of the, uh, the only Division three teams uh, in Pennsylvania that offer both men's and women's ice hockey, which is super exciting. Um, and we do have uh, eSports. That's a new one uh, for us as well. We have our own eSports arena on campus, which is really cool um, that you can actually use just as a student, not necessarily on the eSports uh, team. That being said, if you're not interested in playing a varsity sport, we do have um, campus recreation on campus, as well as over 60 clubs and organizations to get involved in. Um, then that ranges kind of from everything under the sun, social organizations, academic ones that are based on majors, honor societies, volunteer groups, anything that you can think of. And if there's something that isn't there on campus, um, it's really easy to get something started uh, as well. And I guarantee there's other people who are interested in it also. Um, here at Arcadia, you are guaranteed housing all four years. Um, you are There is a two-year housing requirement for us at Arcadia. We offer traditional style residence halls, suite style residence halls, um, as well as apartment style housing that's only about a block down the road, uh, but still considered on-campus housing um, at Arcadia. So lots of different options. Now, it wouldn't be Arcadia if we didn't talk a little bit about studying abroad. Um, it really is something that is in our DNA. Arcadia has been studying students abroad ever since we were originally founded as Beaver College um, back in the 1800s. Uh, we've sent our first uh, students abroad back in 1946. So a lot of uh, really great uh, success so far. Um, and we are in the rank number one in study abroad participation um, for 2020, uh, which is amazing. Um, and as you can see from the screen here, about 76% of our students will use their passport in some way before they graduate, going to over 39 countries overall. Um, that being said, you know, 39 countries is about a quarter of the world that students are going and earning credits. So there's really no limitation on where you can go. Um, there's really no limitations on majors, even for more of the competitive majors within the sciences and education. Students can still go abroad. Um, we have a couple of unique study abroad programs that we offer um, in short term programs like our preview program, uh, which is a really cool program that you go abroad during your spring break or your first year um, and many others as well. We can spend like a whole presentation talking about studying abroad at Arcadia. A little bit about the admissions process. We are rolling admissions here at Arcadia and our application is open and we are reviewing and sending decisions out now uh, for the fall of 2022. We are on the Common App and we are also on the Coalition application. Um, there's no fee for either application. And so it doesn't matter which one you uh, fill out in that regard. We both take about the same amount of time as well. Um, so no benefits on that. Um, but you will need your high school transcript uh, and one letter of recommendation from either a teacher or a counselor. Um, if you have multiple recommendations, you're welcome to submit them, but we only need one. Um, and we are test optional here at Arcadia. So if you do not plan on submitting your, your SAT or ACT scores, that's no problem. Um, you're still considered for all financial aid and all scholarships. Um, but if you wanted to submit that, uh, by all means, you are welcome to. Um, here at Arcadia, our essay is optional. That is something that I actually recommend students to uh, still submit. Um, so um, 
make that not optional in your regard um, and the resume is optional as well. Um, last thing that I'll finish up with is that you are automatically considered uh, for merit-based scholarships when you apply to Arcadia. Um, so there's nothing that you have to do separate um, and those range between about $15,000 and $30,000 uh, for all four years that you're at Arcadia. We do offer a distance scholarship, uh, distance grant uh, for students coming from over 250 miles, as well as uh, any additional aid that we can offer through the FAFSA. Um, thank you all so much. If you have any questions, I'm happy to talk uh, in the Q&A uh, and I'll share my contact info as well. Thanks. All right, thank you so much to Arcadia University. And next up we have Virginia Tech. Ah, that awkward moment when you don't unmute yourself. All righty. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Donnell Wright. I'm Assistant Director and Undergraduate Office Admissions at Virginia Tech. Um, appreciate you all for joining for today. Virginia Tech was founded in 1872 as Virginia Agriculture and Mechanical College. Um, and we're located in Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia's premier land, public land grant institution. They're top, we're the largest research institution in the state of Virginia. Around 70% of our students are doing some form of undergraduate research. Um, and the first thing that kind of defines Virginia Tech in those perspectives is that idea of service. Service is very important to us and integral to the Virginia Tech spirit and nation that we have here at Virginia Tech. And it goes through our motto. Our motto is ut prosum, which transfer, translates to that I may serve in Latin. Uh, so that goes in one of the pure, core parts and with our core cadets, we're one of six senior military institutions, more similar to like Texas A&M, where we have a more of a uh, military institution on a civilian campus. Um, so all branches of the armed forces where students do have an, um, uh, have an opportunity to go through those leadership routes as an officer, going through the military opportunities, but as well for students who do have a, a focus and passion for service in the world, um, we'd have opportunities with that. Um, we do have a, a ton of different study abroad opportunities for students to get involved in. We have study abroad opportunities on all of our continents uh, for students to get in, um, uh, have an opportunity. And so if you want to go to Antarctica, we do have it. We have an opportunity for you to go there as well. But our idea is, outside of service, um, the idea that we, that we want Virginia Tech to have, be a place that you want to call home, that's part of that Hokie spirit and Hokie nation we want you to I uh, want you to learn about and get a, a feel for as well, a place that you want to call home. We have over 900 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in. And these literally 900 clubs and organizations, the things that, uh, all those little things, those little niches that you wouldn't even think you had an interest of, but you know you, now you have an interest of, those things that you can get involved in. Um, so if you like chocolate milk, we have a Chocolate Milk Mondays club, literally a club for you to just chug chocolate milk um, if you love it and with all your friends. If you love chicken and waffles, we have a chicken and waffles uh, Fridays club. So every Friday, toast to a wing and a waffle. Plenty of things to find those niches, find those little places that you'll want to find, call home here in Blacksburg, Virginia, and at Virginia Tech. We are D1 athletics, so in football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, soccer, softball, all the above, volleyball, uh, we are in the ACC Atlantic Coastal Conference, so we're playing the UVAs, UNCs, Dukes, Miamis, Notre Dames, and things of that nature, so definitely catch us this Saturday as we play Notre Dame in our football, so that's going to be a really big game um, into that case, uh, but we are D1 athletics, so uh, we are playing. You get to have a good opportunity to have that big football and athletic vibe as well, a wide variety of different athletic academic opportunities. We have over 110 different majors and over 200 minors and concentrations in our eight colleges, agriculture and life sciences, architecture and urban study, top five architecture program, engineering, we're number 31 in the nation for our college of engineering, liberal arts and human sciences, 55 different majors in our liberal arts and human sciences, natural resource and environment, Pamplin College of Business, our College of Science, and of University Studies. And as well, we do have a College of Public Health as well for those students who do have an interest within that as well. Um, for those students who are interested in vet medicine, we do have our Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine on our campus with our livestock on our campus as well for you to get involved in and have those immediate resources for research um, and, and things of that nature on our campus for that. One thing I do want to put in perspective is that major matters. So when you're applying to Virginia Tech, you're applying directly to one of our majors, not just the institution overall. Um, so if you're interested in engineering, you're applying to the college engineer as a general engineer, um, and then you have put a concentration of what directly you'd be interested in, whether it's mechanical, aerospace, electrical, mining and minerals, so on and so forth, um, into that perspective. Um, if you're interested in business, we do have marketing, management, real estate, hospitality, and tourism management, accounting, finance, business information technology, a wide variety of different things from there. But even if you know you don't know exactly what you want to do, we do have undecided routes in all of our particular colleges. So say you want to do something in agriculture, but not sure which one you want to do, you can do agriculture, undecided, agriculture undecided, architecture undecided, and so on and so forth. Those are great opportunities for you to discover your path here at Virginia Tech. Outside of far as applying to us, we are on the coalition and the common application. We don't have a preference of either one that you decide to do. We don't have a preference in them. We decide you just apply to one of them. 
into that case. Um, and in, in general, we're, when you're looking at applying to, to us, we review you in a very holistic re review. We're in a business, we're moving barriers and making sure Virginia Tech is, a, uh, is accessible and equitable to every student. And we're gonna look at you academically and personally. Um, and in that academic side, we wanna see what the grades, that you are A's and B's in all your courses and as well rigor. We wanna see if you're taking the most rigorous courses, AP, IB, dual enrollment courses, and whatever that your school provides in the context of your high school um, into that case. Um, we don't look at GPAs in our review process. There's no real equity within GPAs, but we wanna see that you've taken the most challenging courses at your high school into that case. We are test optional. Um, so for those seniors for the fall of 2022 that are applying to Virginia Tech, we are test optional. We like to say, if, you're, if you believe your test scores are representative of your academic success, then by all means submit them. If you don't want to submit them, or you don't feel like submitting them in that case, then by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. We will not penalize you for not submitting your test scores. Personal statements, we want to know who you are from you and not from anyone else. We have four personal statements called our UPROs and profile for you to reflect on those experiences and show us who you truly are. Those opportunities for, for you to um, distance yourself from your peers and anyone else about who you truly are and how those experiences uh, manifest into the great person you are today. Um, we have three decisions. We have three main decisions for traditional for our incoming freshmen, early decision, early action, and regular decision. We recommend students applying at the very latest for our early action. That is our priority deadline. So you're applying by December 1 and you'll be notified late February, but you still have until May 1st, which is our which is national decision deadline to see if Virginia Tech's the house you want to call home. So make sure you are applying by that. That's going to be our premier um, uh, priority deadline for that into that case. Um, but lastly, it's going to be that return and investment. You know, why in that perspective? Why do you want to consider Virginia Tech? Of course, we want you to come to Virginia Tech, experience some of the great things that we have, um, chug up all on the chocolate nook that you have in those cases. But we have 86% graduation rate. 82% of our students are either employed or for pursuing further education six months after graduation, making roughly about $65,000 a year. So students are prepared and, and have the necessary tools to be successful post-graduation. And we have a 90% retention rate from there. But well, thank you uh, for coming and um, yeah. All right, thank you to Virginia Tech. And that was our last presenter today, but we do still have a little bit of time left. So I would like to invite all of our presenters to go ahead and um, turn their cameras back on so we can do a little Q&A here. So I got some questions that I'd like to ask all of you. The first one is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And uh, we'll go ahead and start with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Yeah, thanks. Um, I would say my advice, if you have the opportunity, if possible, please visit every school that you are interested in. So once you've narrowed down what are your top choices, um, go to the school if you can. Um, I think that's really just the best way to figure out if it's the right fit for you. You're really going to get that feeling when you're on the campus. Um, but if you aren't able to visit campus, of course, take advantage of all the resources that colleges have to offer now, especially after COVID. There's a lot of great virtual tours, virtual resources out there. So take advantage of those for sure. Uh, the piece of advice that I would give for students in the college search process is to check your email, um, make an email, check your email, don't forget about it. Um, I'm sure that many students are hopefully looking at multiple schools and getting emails from multiple schools. So things like uh, deadlines, uh, housing dates, the timeline stuff that can be really important. A lot of that will be emailed to you and you can always check back. Um, so be checking your email so you're not missing those deadlines. Yeah, I'll just piggyback, you know, um, really take the time to go out and like they said earlier piggyback off what uh Madison said is go look at schools tour the facilities you know talk to faculty um really be able to stand back and take a look around a school and say yeah i'm going to be successful here um i think that's really important um you know we try to remember that college is a vehicle it's a vehicle to get you to your destination which is your career um so you really want to make sure that you pick the right vehicle um and that's just it's a good fit for you Yeah, I think everyone would probably say something along the same lines that the most important factor um, of success at any college for any student is whether or not that college fits you. And just being on campus, um, one important thing that I would like to add on that is um, also trying to take time during the academic school year to go visit college, just so you can see how other students are functioning, walking around campus, even just um, seeing a group of people and looking at them and seeing if you would fit in there. That kind of makes sense. 
Yeah, my biggest piece of advice um, is also to talk to current students if you have an opportunity um, at the schools that you're looking at. There's always so much that all of us on the screen can tell you about the universities. In some of the cases, you might be speaking to an alumni of that university at the colleges, but that's not always the case. Um, so definitely talk to current students. They know what's going on. They know like what's it like what's it like on campus and that sort of thing, at least more immediately because they're there still. Um, so that's my biggest piece of advice. Take advantage of other visit opportunities. Don't just do a college tour necessarily in the fall. There might be other admitted student events if you have colleges that are local that you're applying to. So um, we do a lot of different cool stuff. So take a look. Yeah, I would definitely say um, one thing would be uh, to be willing willing to take a risk in matters of your search and your authenticity and those searches for college and things of that nature. We get caught up in the, the same colleges that we're thinking of. Maybe that's the in-state colleges or the alums of your mother and fathers or parent and daughter in, in that perspective, but definitely willing to branch out and look at other institutions and see if that institution is the right fit for you. And not only the right match in matters of having that major, but fit as far as fitting all those little things that, uh, that, are, that are right for you that would make that institution the best place for you. Um, and lastly, um, with uh, deadlines. Deadlines, deadlines, deadlines are really important when it comes to the admissions process. Um, and we really do value those. And so we don't, the worst thing we want to do is cancel an application because you don't meet that at deadline. Um, so make sure you are on top of the deadlines for every institution, whether that's for the application, financial aid, very important for that. Um, and all those little things that we have so we can best serve you the best way possible. All right, yeah, thank you. A lot of really good advice there. Um, I think we might have time for just one more question. So what's one thing that you want students to remember about your school? And again, we'll start with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't know if we'd get to this one, so I didn't think about it as much. Um, I would say, well, I always say that if I could describe UW-Madison students in one way, it would be that they are energetic. So there's one thing you can take away about UW-Madison is that we are a very energetic school full of students that are have a lot of pride in the university. At Mankato, I would say the one thing to remember is a high quality education awesome experiences at a very affordable cost um, for you Minnesota folks, a, a, a location that may be close to home, a location that's a good distance away from home, depending on what your interests are. Yeah, to remember about Southeast Tech is to circle back on our faculty. Um, you know, you get that one-on-one -on -one attention, you get that time with them, you get that hands-on with them, and uh, they're all industry experienced. So they've all done the job that they're teaching you. We don't have any uh, full-time professors that that's all they've done their whole life. Um, they've all worked in the fields that they're teaching you in. They know how it goes. So remember our faculty. You do get to have that personalized relationship with your professors and your professors haven't always been professors. So they can also help when you're looking for internships and then also help you make connections for future job opportunities. Uh, for Arcadia, definitely a no-brainer on this question. We have a castle on campus. It never gets old, like I mentioned. Um, it's a place that you can just hang out as a student. You can reserve the rooms to do events with your clubs and organizations. Um, the fireplaces still work, so in the winter, it's nice and cozy in the castle. Um, and then also the study abroad opportunities at Arcadia are second to none. Um, we really try and make it as accessible as possible to everybody, um, so definitely take advantage. And for Virginia Tech, the main thing, and I like to highlight this, is that we're a pretty large institution. Um, so we're located in Blacksburg, Virginia, in a small town, but we are uh, 30,000 strong, 24,000 undergraduate students, 6,000 graduate students on a 2,600 acre land. But all I like to say about big schools is you can make a big school seem small, but you can't make a small school seem big. Um, so with all the different clubs and organizations we have available, definitely plenty of things for find your niche, those things that you have available that's around there. If you love hiking, we have plenty of that. Um, around 17 different hiking spots, cascades, waterfalls, different quarries around the the where you can find those different things available. We're number one in the nation for food services. So definitely great opportunity for, for you to feel comfortable and feel like this is a place you want to call home. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing some, just a couple additional things about your schools. And uh, I think we are out of time now. So I do want to say thank you to all of our presenters today uh, for sharing uh, that information about their schools. And also thanks to all of you for joining us. When you close this window, there is going to be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, we also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions. We've got one more tonight. 
And lastly, you will be uh, able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thanks again, everyone, and have a good evening.